finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict, hitting you with another video. This one's going to be a little bit different, although I am going to stay on Bring a Trailer. If you take a look on your screen here, you're going to see on 830 about a week ago, a 62 Lincoln Continental sedan sold for 43000 And if we look back just a, gosh, about a month prior to that, on July 20th, you may recall I did the review of this 1965 Lincoln Continental convertible, a white car. It sold for 48250 So I wanted to talk briefly how a sedan could sell for well over 40000 within 5000 or so of a convertible and how that's possible and uh, why this sedan for, sold for so much. So again, shout out to Bring a Trailer. I have no connection to them. I just enjoy going on the site reviewing these listings. So I did not get to this one in time, but as you can see, as I mentioned, 8-30-2022, this sedan, 62 uh, sold uh, for you know forty three grand. Now I've talked to in the past. You could tell uh, that the sixty two has what I kind of refer to those the rectangles in the grill. So that's the standout uh, tell, if you will, uh, looking at a front three quarter shot and how you know it's a sixty uh, two. If you look through this car or you look through the information, you're going to see you know a really really nice car. Uh, uh, Calif it, it was acquired by the seller in California in twenty fifteen. It's got all the information here. It looks like about 79,000 miles. You see it has the original hubcaps, maybe a little bit wider white wall. And you get down here and you see it does have air suspension. So it's got airlift performance, one of the big names out there. It's got Vire compressor. It's got a small air tank. You can see some of the exposed wiring here uh, with the relay that's needed for the compressor. It looks like it only has a single compressor there. You look here and you say, wow, the interior looks really, really good. We'll talk more about that. Dash looks really good here from what we can see. You got a unique uh, perspective there, an overhead photo looking down. You've got, um, looks like the air cleaner set up, you know, painted a matte black. We can see that it has the upgraded brakes. Not only does it have the dual master, but it has the upgraded uh, brake booster. Uh, looks like it has the new, um, I think they're referred to as roto locks. And uh, those are the uh, service valves for the newer 134A, so it's more than likely been upgraded. We can see that it has the two-port um, fuel pump. It has the fan shroud, so this is the metal one, and it has the clutch fan there. You can see which is good. Everything looks good underneath there. Underneath here, you see some of the air sus or some of the sus excuse me the suspension in general. Um, you see the Vintag and you got a ton of photos here. Okay. So really what I wanted to hit upon is, you know, I've been around the air suspension since really the, the late nineties. I had airbags on a vehicle in the, in the nineties and it's not for everyone. Uh, we know that oftentimes when I post on social media through Lincoln addict, right from Instagram and Facebook, you know, people are going to com comment often and say they don't necessarily like that these cars are being airbagged and whatnot. I'm a fan of it. I do know some cars are, are really nice, and sometimes you go, eh, I don't I don't know if I would bag this one. I've owned one of those cars now, uh, the 65 I own. But when we look at this, the one thing I think from a presentation, a presentation standpoint is a lot of people are going to look at this and go, wow, it's a nice black car. It's actually not black, so we'll talk about it. But here's the key thing. Although this car is airbagged, their front three-quarter shot, that main money shot here, is the car not aired out. And I think the key to that is, again, air suspension may not be for everyone. I do know, um, you know, sometimes the older crowd, they say, eh, I don't necessarily like it. But you'll find a guy that says, hey, I think it's awesome, or the ladies, right? The way they presented this car was like, look, you could air this car up and drive it just like that. And you can't really tell that it's necessarily airbagged. And I think that was the key thing to the sell of this. And when you really go through the photos and you look at what we saw a minute ago, the interior pretty clean install here. You can kind of see some of the bracketry that they made that kind of bolts to the floor. You know, being around air suspension a while, I'd say this is a, you know, a decent install. You can see a little panel they made here, you know, nothing over the top. Um, you'll often see some real crazy trunk setups. This one's, uh, by all means, it looks like a professional setup. 
uh, the interior looks fantastic. And what I wanted to point out is when we look at the other photos, the the interior kind of ties in here because I think when we first see it, we're like, oh, wow, a black Lincoln. But when you get down here and you start looking through the photos, you'll see that it's kind of like a root beer color. And it is hard to tell in these photos. You can kind of see it right here. Now, as I mentioned um, on other videos, you know, doing some more research with Link with uh, Bring a Trailer, they do offer for an additional cost to bring someone out and take professional photos. I'm assuming that's what this person did, and uh, you know, kind of like the old school Auto Trader days when you'd pay that small fee, they'd come out and snap the photo. That would go in the Auto Trader, which you know was a big thing down here in the South, at least. Um, you know, this is you know whatever few hundred dollar fee they charge, and they quote take professional photos. Boom. But you can see here, this is where the car's aired up. A lot of people, you know, the air suspension gets a bad rap. You could drive this car around, you know, air it up, and or even be at a show and not air it out. Um, I know Tony, I think, took his Red 65 years ago to a show, and, you know, we didn't even have it aired out half the time. No one even really knew it was airbag, so to speak, until the trunk was open. But you could see here, you know, not a crazy stance. I mean, it is a little bit lower, um, you know, getting down, kind of tucking that front tire a little bit. And, you know, if you've never been around air suspension, I mean, it's very, very reliable. It goes back uh, many years, well over, um, you know, back to the old days of the Greyhound buses and even before then, technically, the concept of it, if you kind of research it. But, you know, if you go back to like the 40s, 50s with the Greyhounds, air suspension has been around a long time. It's very reliable. It does get a bad rap sometimes because, you know, bad installs, lines not ran right, um, you know, things like that. But, uh, you know, I've often talked about Devious Customs. You can go to DeviousCustoms.com and get almost a, a full Bolton kit now these days. Um, you can see here, if you look at kind of the finish, what I refer to as the finish work here, you can see that it looks like someone did kind of come in here and polish a lot of this. To me, the paint looks really, really good. And you can see a little bit of the hint of the root beer there. Now, these that does look like an iPhone photo, so... I, you know, I don't know if these were bringing trailer photos. You know, I would assume they would use a digital camera, but you never know. Uh, cameras are are awesome these days in phones, of course. Uh, the the seller does point out a few little uh, minor spots, and again, I look at things like this and go, yeah, if you're real OCD or down the road, you could you know have it stripped back down and painted or some of these little bubbles fixed. But the cool thing is, I really like about bringing trailer. They often uh, are very upfront as upfront as they can be from a you know online website seller standpoint and uh, here you can kind of really see that root beer color so it is a little bit different it's not a quote black lincoln which i think uh helped it a little bit you know something a tad different you could see again from all the photos someone has maintained this thing really well uh it may not be the best paint job in the world but certainly uh, way nicer than than you know i would expect on on some of these cars i've seen uh, i think it looks great We've talked a little bit about this is kind of rare to see the non um, uh, the non electrical uh, for for the vent windows uh, power excuse me so but you can see there that one is a manual no big deal you just twist it a few times and that vent window opens believe it or not that's one less thing you have to worry about in terms of a, a switch for the front left and front right and then of course the motor as well so again that's one less thing you even have to worry about when I look at the door panels and stuff on this one it looks really really nice. You can see the controller, oftentimes the way air suspension is now is you just got this little controller plugged in with a USB cable that ties into the brain of the system. It runs usually back to the back where you saw that manifold, if you will. Uh, someone more than likely went in here and, again, polished a lot of this. You know, you could take some Brasso or some good metal polisher. I swear by the Brasso myself and, and clean a lot of this up, and it looks uh, really damn good to me. That includes a lot of th this trim, depending on the climate of where the car is stored. I know in the convertibles, it'll tend to get like some surface rust on here. And with the Brasso, when I come in and I polish a lot of this, man, it looks just amazing. Um, but really getting back to the point of doing this video at the beginning, um, the reason why this car can sell for upwards over 40 grand and, and basically within a five grand window of the convertible is when we did the review on the convertible, it had a lot of little things that you kind of just go, you know, it's it's not it wasn't a super tight car, right? Um, nothing against it. I mean, someone's going to, I'm sure, enjoy the heck out of that car. But when you look at the presentation of this car, it just has the the feel of a lot of things are done right. 
Now, I look at this and kind of go, okay, I'm a little OCD, and you know, with some of this wiring, I'd want to come in here and wire loom it and um, you know, do things like that. But that's something that you could easily jump in the trunk and do uh, yourself here. But I like this car because it, it really is kind of – it's well put together. It shows that they took the time to do some of the key things here, like what I've said. And you can always go back in here. Like if you don't like the battery terminals, you can kind of change some of that if you want a wire loom or change up. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this kind of wire loom. I actually like to use something called TechFlex. I used it in my engine bay on my 64. And uh, the original uh, loom or whatever you want to call it, sheathing around a lot of the factory wires kind of will deteriorate over time. And I took the TechFlex, the black, the split, you can buy it split or non-split. I always suggest a split. And you can come in here and you can run it over this, uh, all these wires. You take this loom off. You know, but all those little things that you may, may not like, you know, with some of these relays here and stuff. Again, I think it's it, it shows they've taken the time to come in here and do some of the things. Like, for instance, here, it looks like they have an overflow bottle, although they do have, you know, the overflow tank here. So, you know, there's a couple little things like that. But again, I think from reading the reviews or, or reading the comments, rather, uh, you know, people looked at this car and said, wow, you know, whoever uh, had it, you know, they put the, the, the newer alternator on. I think it was a one wire alternator. And, and they did the things to make it, you know, a car that you can just get in and drive and really not have any issues with, which I, you know, appreciate. You could see a little bit of the exhaust work that was done here. Uh, they did add this strap, which there was a comment about it. You know, don't really often see this kind of in the airbag world. You would see it like in the hydraulic, you know, world where people are hopping the cars and stuff. And But this was basically, they just put it in there to uh, limit the travel on the upside. But, um, you know, again, you don't see that too often, but hey, they did it. Uh, with the ride tech setup that they use, you know, you end up getting these nice shocks and things like that. You can see some of the bushings have been swapped out. Uh, probably like energy suspension, I would assume. And uh, that's going to help, you know, make it pretty tight. It's better to do it rather than not do it. Here you've got a little bit of the paperwork, if you will, um, the owner's manual, uh, Metro Los Angeles, uh, you know, map and things like that. But the other thing that I've always talked about is like, look, the person kept the owner's manuals. They've got a ton of receipts, you know, $1,300 here, $350 here. And showing some of the other things, uh, I think Lairs is the one that makes the uh, rag joint. Um, I would always kind of refer people to to buy those. I think um, online they were pretty cheap if you ever have to change it. But you got all these um, different receipts, and they're showcasing the amount of money the person spent. All of that goes a long way. You got a couple, you know, one build photo here. This is the filter that goes in the. Uh, power steering uh, reservoir. Uh, John Cashman used to always say, you don't have to run this. Other people say, yeah, you do, you know, that type of thing. But again, it was basically a filter just to filter out any junk, if you will, that was going through the power um, steering system. Again, a few more photos, but really that's what I wanted to highlight. I mean, this car, you know, may not be perfect. Uh, I often say none of these cars are perfect. They're always going to need something. But I mean, really when you look at it, someone's taken the time and money, they've collected the receipts, they've showcased what they've done, they showed that the car, you know, even aired up, I'm sure rides great, especially with those shocks, and, you know, you find someone that wants to go to a show, Cars and Coffee, and air it out, boom, they, they've got the best of both worlds, right, aired up, and then aired down, but that's why, in my opinion, uh, very close to a black car, which is super desirable, but it's a little different, it's that root beater color, it's got the factory look with the hubcaps and the tires and things like that. Although I know some purists, they don't like the wider white walls. There's some discussion often whether you could maybe even in 61, 62, maybe even get a wider white wall uh, versus the standard and things like that. But regardless, like I've said in the past, you can always just change the tires out. No big deal if that's something you want to do. But I think a very good buy for someone on the higher end of a sedan. But you got to remember, if you start really looking into... Uh, air suspension at dvscustoms.com you start adding everything up with a compressor or two the actual components the bags the hardware the lines and all that i mean you're easily going to be five to ten grand you know you're talking install as well so yeah you could cut some corners and maybe do a homemade kit and maybe not do control arms in the front and things like that absolutely there, there are different packages but you know when i tell people in 2022 to bag a car and get the components and pay someone to do it right, 
you're looking at easily five to ten grand, depending on where you live. So if you kind of factor that into a real nice car that might typically go for twenty five, and then you go, okay, I'm at the thirty five range. Now they've got all the receipts. They've showed that it's a nice car. I could see easily why this one uh, went over forty grand. Um, the uh, only thing I would point out is there was only one video, and we have typically seen more videos, but. Um, you could see here the person um, looks like they're just kind of walking around the car. And again, I always talk about, you know, they, they should mention if they rebuilt the steering column. Uh, I always, public service announcement, don't leave these cars idling uh, while you're outside the car because we've talked about it. They can jump into reverse and you can total a car. Someone could get very injured and things like that. But um, I would have liked to see a little bit more, you know, videos of the windows working. Uh, maybe the air suspension airing up and down and things like that. But um, if this wasn't, which I'm assuming now wasn't a bring a trailer or contact, uh, they did take some great photos of it. But, you know, they may not have thought, hey, let me take a bunch of video of those things. But certainly it would help. This case, I guess it didn't really matter. They got 43K out of a 62 sedan. Two thumbs up for me in terms of uh, a nice car someone got. That's it. Make sure you check out LincolnAttic.com. There's links to how to listen to the podcast. We just had Brian Fuller on. He's on two different TV shows, uh, Caffeine and Octane, and he's also on Carfix. Uh, Brian Fuller is a Lincoln guy. He owns two Lincolns. Uh, check out the podcast. Again, it's free. And uh, LincolnAttic.com, there's shirts and stickers available if, um, if you want to show some support. I appreciate all the love. Take care. We out of here. Peace.